Hi guys, good morning. I haven't been to bed yet. It's. I don't know if my clock's even right. Yeah. It's a little after 1 a.m. I was just, um, watching near death experience videos and reading their stories. Excuse me, and I thought I'd share one with you guys. This, this is Sarah Powell's near-death experience and guardian angel visions. This is her story. On November 16, 1993, in a middle-class home in Clear Lake, Texas, Deborah Powell's daughter was broken into by burglars while her youngest daughter, Sarah, was there alone from school. Deborah came home and found her daughter hogtied, her hands tied to her feet, and having amnesia. Although she couldn't remember what happened to her, she was deeply depressed, and because of her amnesia, she had to relearn everything all over again. One month after the crime, Sarah fell down and had what appeared to be a seizure. Sarah was diagnosed with having severe post-traumatic stress disorder, and it was during her seizures that the terrifying details of the crime would enter her memory. When the burglars entered the home, Sarah became hysterical. One of the robbers attempted to smother her with a pillow. Fighting for her life, she noticed a tattoo on the burglar who was trying to kill her. When he realized she had seen his tattoo, he became enraged and struck her in the head. It was at this point that she died and had a near-death experience. After I left my body, I found myself waking up underneath a tree in a place that seemed to be the best place that anyone could possibly be. It's the place I call heaven. It is definitely the place where I want to spend eternity. As I began to look around, I saw a figure approaching me, and it turned out to be a good friend of mine. He had passed away four days before. Brian walked up to me and simply explained to me what was happening to me. He said I was going to be okay, and that I was going to be spared for a certain reason. I had something to do. He said he had someone to introduce to me. Shortly after, someone else walked up. It was a tall man in a white suit with a white top hat who spoke in a British accent. He said, I am going to be with you for a long time. I've known you all your life, and I've been your guardian angel all your life. He said... He didn't want me to be afraid because of what was happening to me. I wasn't dying. I would have to go back. Then he told me that I was brought there to rest, to gain, to gain the courage and energy to go and finish what I was supposed to finish. It seemed like everything then started to kind of fade out, and then I was back in my room before I knew it. When I woke up again, my dog was licking me in the face and I didn't know where I was or who I was or how how I got where I was and why I was tied up. Something occurred while in the process of her psychologist who was making regular visits to Sarah's home to help her regain her memory. My psychologist was trying to calm me down because no one could. I was to the point where I wasn't even trying to listen to anybody. I was just rocking back and forth and trying to sing to myself. While I was talking to her, a light appeared. It appeared as a circular shape and then came down as a long oval that was George. Immediately I stopped crying and Sharon, the psychologist, just seemed to be amazed. She said, how come you calm down so quickly? And I said, he says I'm going to be okay, and he is going to take care of me now. The guardian angel Sarah met during her near-death experience, who became affectionately known as George, helped in Sarah's emotional healing and reached out to touch the lives of Sarah's family and friends. <clears throat> I told my mother to sit down. I said, I have an angel, and he is going to be with me a while to help us get through this. He says he has been with me a long time since I was a baby. 
He says that when I was little, a kid, I used to laugh at him because he had this big hat that he had to push out of his eyes. When Sarah's mother heard this, she started to cry. There was a time when Sarah was two or three years old, when Sarah would laugh a lot in her room. Her mother would peek in the room and ask what Sarah was laughing at. Sarah would say, the man with the big hat comes and makes me laugh all the time. Sarah's mother even keeps drawings that Sarah created of this man who made her laugh as a child. At this point in her healing, Sarah would frequently receive visitations from George. Sarah would actually be able to see and converse with George, even though family members could not see or hear him. Sarah was even able to have George heal her friend, who had suffered constantly with their various illnesses throughout her life. When Sarah was fully recovered, George prepared her for the departure. George had a message he wanted to leave with Sarah to share with others, and he wanted her to write it down. The following is the message. You must see that everyone within your reach hears about what happened to you, all of it. You must open their eyes and give them hope. Dedicate your soul to healing people simply by talking and letting everyone know how the world is changing. You'll begin to get responses. Ideas will come. Solutions to problems will appear, and the people will send you letters supporting you. Some people will be negative, but these are the people who will be harder to reach. Don't let them discourage you. You have proven to be strong, and your family as well. I know you can get through this, and when you do, you'll come out even stronger than before. Through your mouth they will hear, because you are a child, a child of God, and a child who can bring hope to God's people. Please stay peaceful and one with God, Sarah Powell's guardian angel. After receiving this message, George went away and could not be seen by Sarah again. Sarah has this to say about guardian angels. I think everybody has their own personal guardian angel. It's really amazing to think that there's someone just for me, someone that God sent just for me. That's what I always think whatever, whenever I feel down. So that was Sarah's story. Oh, gosh. I'm tired, guys. I think there was a short one on here. Give me a sec. I'm pretty sure I've seen a short one that I could go along with this video. And hers is long. I thought hers was short. Well, maybe... This guy's is short. He's a Dr. Frank Oski's Angel Vision. In Dr. Melvin Moore's book, Parting Visions, the following angel encounter is documented. In my own research, I have found angels to be an integral part of visions of all kinds. At least 50% of the children in my study see guardian angels as a part of their near-death experience. I have also found that guardian angels lend their help at other times of crisis when a person needs answers or his or her uh, spirit is down. Angels are reported under a variety of circumstances. Another report comes from Dr. Frank Oski, a professor of pediatrics under whom I trained at Johns Hopkins University. Oski is not a new age guru, rather. He is a demanding pediatrician with an encyclopedic knowledge of medicine who insisted that his students come to the hospital having read the last medical journal articles. Yet to my great surprise, Dr. Oski had been touched by the same mystical light described by people down through the ages who have had visions, including near-death experiences. As a medical student, Oski was enthusiastic about the potential of modern medicine, but frustrated by the fact that children die of congenital defects that are beyond anyone's control. One night, he went to bed pondering the fate of a dying patient. Although he was doing his best, 
The child was not improving. He felt powerless to help and went to sleep wondering why this child had to die. About an hour after falling asleep, Oski was awakened by a bright light, one that shone in his room like a private sun. Oski could not could make out the form of a woman in the glow of the intense light. She had wings on her back and was approximately 20 years old. In a quiet and reassuring voice, the woman explained to the speechless Oski why it was that the children had to die. <clears throat> the angel, I don't know what else to call her, said that life is an endless cycle of improvements and that humans are not perfect yet. She said that most people have this secret revealed to them when they die, but the handicapped children often know this and endure their problems without complaining because they know that their burdens will pass. Some of these children, she said, have even been given the challenge of teaching the rest of us how to love. It stretches our own humanity to love a child who is less than perfect, said the angel, and that is an important lesson for us all. Oski has been courageous enough to talk freely about his experience. He has even written about it for a major pediatric journal. In the article he wrote, I will make no attempt to convince you as to the reality of my story, but I would merely ask that you keep an open mind on my mysteries of life, which occur to you on a daily basis. And that was Dr. Frank Oski's angel vision story. So, this there's not very many on this on this site, guys. There are supposed to be near death experiences, but most of them are angel sightings. I think I'll have to stop with that one because, yeah, this video is over 12 minutes. So I'll stop with those two stories tonight. I'm already getting ready to go to bed soon. So, God willing, I'll see you guys when I get up with a Bible reading and um, some more stories that I get off line somewhere. If we go back to the funny ones or the inspirational ones or the... I'll find something for you guys, to hopefully, that you guys will enjoy. I don't know if you guys like these ones or not. I thought I'd try something new, so I went to the near-death experiences, but most of them was just like angel sightings, so maybe I can find another one for you guys that's better than that. But I love you guys. God loves you guys. Let's bring those souls to Jesus. Hope you guys have a good sleep, and I will, God willing, see you later in the morning. Bye, guys.